What's going on guys and girls, Asher here from Player TV and today we're having a look at this device right here. This is the Elgato, Egato, something like that, Stream Deck. Basically this is a 15 programmable button device that you plug into your computer and it's used for streaming. Before we get any further into it though, we'll just go with the title. And my phone's got to go off. Yay emails. So briefly, what exactly is this Elgato Stream Deck? Well basically, on the front of it here we have 15 programmable buttons that are programmed through the actual Elgato Stream Deck software and right behind them as well are LCD screens, full colour LCD screens as well which is a nice touch. Now I won't, uh, normally expect them to be black and white on a device but it is a bit pricey so we are looking at the higher end of things here. But like I said, 15 programmable buttons and they can be programmed to do numerous things from muting your microphone to changing scenes to changing the inputs and to date saying thanks showing you view account absolutely all sorts of things about 210 different things you can actually do with it 15 buttons on it so you got to pick and choose a little bit but at the moment in time as i set it up there isn't actually that many so like i said it is more of a professional kind of thing this professional it's obviously got 15 buttons but it's got a quite a big price tag to go with it but it is nice and firmly made. I mean, hold it in the hand. It doesn't feel plasticky, even though it is a plastic back on it. It doesn't actually feel plasticky in itself. The buttons on the front all look out, feel absolutely solid. Um, one thing you do notice, especially, is if you do push the buttons a bit hard, you can see them actually touching the LCD screen below, which is a bit concerning, but most of the time they go back. But where you don't have to press them that hard, the actual actuation point is just above. So a quick poke and they're going to be fine. You don't need to slam your finger down onto them. The only major gripe I've got with the actual build quality of the thing is the cable that comes with it. Now, the cable is about 41 inches long on our model. It may vary normally. But the problem is it's not actually removable. So the top of it, you can't actually take out the device. Now, with the price point on this device, you'd quite like to do that. Because if the cable, which is normally one of the first things that breaks on any device, if the cable breaks, you can't use the device. It'll be absolutely useless unless you take it in bits yourself and start soldering it, which I normally don't recommend because soldering's hard. Unless you were good at soldering, then go ahead, take it in bits and put a better cable on it. But like I said, it isn't a rubberized cable as well, so it's nothing really special. With regards to the actual LCD behind the screens, I do believe it's one big LCD that's then split up, so there'll be hidden bits of LCD. I'm not too sure, I haven't taken it in bits. The actual buttons themselves feel nice and squishy. They don't feel like they're meant to be clicky, which they're not meant to be really. And it's obviously not a touch screen on it, so they are physical buttons. But they do feel nice and squishy, which is actually kind of a nice thing on an item like this. You don't want like a keyboard kind of sensation, you want a different kind of sensation. But when you do click them, you do notice you are clicking them. There is that feedback there for you. The actual LCD under, it's not the highest quality LCD, but honestly, you're not going to be playing games or anything on this. I mean, I've got, for example, the highest quality I've got here is the Google Chrome web browser icon, and you can easily read the text, and you can also quite, it also is quite sharp on the actual icon itself. Now, most of this is actually in, now obviously with this device, most of the things I'm going to show you are going to be in the software, not actually on the device itself. But like I said, I'm just showing you a bit of B-roll here just to get a feel of what the device does look like. And like I said, when you do touch it, there is a plastic shell, but it does feel very hard. And from a, di from a bit of a distance, it does look like a metal shell, even though it isn't. Also, each button in the actual device is 15 millimeters across, so 15 by 15. So it's not, like I said, the biggest screen underneath it, but you don't really need that big screen. It's only just for that quick bit of feedback. You don't want to be staring at this thing while you're doing streaming. You want to be looking at the game and know what you're playing. Now quickly talking about the specifications on this device, the size of it is 118 by 84 by 21 millimeters, weighs just under 200 grams at 190 grams ours came in at, obviously the 15 customizable LCD keys on the front and obviously the built in 2.0 cable is about 41 inches long. So that's really all I can say about the device, just looking at it in person. So now I think it's time to actually jump on computer, have a quick play with it and stream a bit of stuff. And I'll tell you what I think of it after that all. So enjoy. This is future me now looking at the thing on the computer. Enjoy.
So guys, here we are, I'm recording all this for OBS at the moment in time and I'm using my webcam because I couldn't be bothered to sort that other camera out. Still using the same audio so it shouldn't be too bad. But anyway, this is the actual software we've got to be using. This is the Stream Deck software and as you can see, I've also got uh, the Stream Deck right here and it matches exactly what's on the Stream Deck software. He'll just basically just copy and paste it. Now, like I said, the idea behind this thing is so you don't have to have like all your macros and stuff set at the side or so you don't have to keep jumping out of the game to change stuff. This just lets you do it for you. And it's fantastic for me as well for the set that I've actually got a K65, which is a 10 keyless. So it's got no, uh, nothing, uh, no macro keys or anything like that on it. So this is working absolutely fantastic with me so far. So let's have a quick look at the software anyway. So we'll go straight into Game Catcher. And obviously we've got the uh, tip me stream thing, which is obviously the scene notes. You've got the OBS part down here. So no, like I said, it supports OBS and XSplit. And it also has a bit of Twitter integration. And obviously it has this Twitch integration down here as well. So all the stuff you need where well, it's got to be working absolutely fine. And also it can control your computer so you can actually stop and play music, which I don't need to do because well, I've got that on my keyboard already. So this is how I've got it set up at the moment in time. I've got my starting soon. Uh, my in-game, out-of-game and a web browser which I like to bring up sometimes and watch silly videos on. And above the in-game, out-of-game and web browser I've got control to turn my, my uh, webcam on and off. And I can also mute my mic and mute the desktop sound. Which doesn't actually physically mute the microphone, it just mutes it through OBS. So you're not going to stop talking on Discord, you've just got to stop broadcasting your voice. And here we've got a little Twitch message as well that says thank you for watching. And here is a cool little bit. This is uh, the Twitch viewers. So this actually shows how many views you've got and it actually displays it on the Elgato Stream Deck. So that's a nice little feature to have. You do have a lot more things for Twitch as well. So your things like play adverts, stream title or game, and the sub chat, slow the chat down, followers chat and emote chat, which I don't ever use any of them because I don't have subscribers or anything like that. I only have like my... 50 or 100 followers or something like that. Uh, Twitter, you can also tweet stuff out. So what I'll do, I'll show you how to use it. We'll use Twitter as an example. You will drag it over and you have to add an account. So obviously you'd have to add your Twitch account here. I don't actually have one at the moment in time because Twitch don't like me. And what you do, you give it a title and the actual thing. So let's say I'm streaming now, uh, stream now. And that would then show up on the bottom. And that's what you'd see on the actual Elgato. Then you'd go down to message down here and that's what it would actually type. So, hey guys, I'm streaming on Twitch right now. So that's not a link to Twitter, but obviously you'd put a link to Twitter there and then people would find you on streaming. All you have to do is click that button and that would be sent out to Twitch. Exactly the same way with the chat uh, chat messages. So like I said, I've got that one there. I'm not really that one because I want to delete it. But before I go, another little thing you can do, you can change whereabouts the title is shown. So you can put it in the middle or the bottom. And you can also do this. You can click on this, go to your system. I'm in system 32 for some reason and go in and actually pick an image. So there you go. That's where I've got that. I've got my little doggo and that also displays on the old Gato. So like I said, this here, all this stuff here is basically a copy of what you're seeing on the Stream Deck. So like I said, I haven't used all the features on this device because I don't really have a need for them. It is just a nice little feature, I think, for using to get in, in and out of different scenes. So I'm going to show you a look at them now. So I'm still recording this, obviously recording for OBS. So this is how you'd see the stream. So if we're going to start in soon, that's where you'd get up. You'd get the start in soon and a little doggo in the bottom because I like that doggo. When I was in game, Obviously you'd get the overlay and stuff, and it does all, obviously this is OBS so Studio, so it does a nice fades and stuff, that's not the Elgato doing that, and it's just the changing. And like I said, I'm not actually touching the computer at all. And then out of game, really big picture of my face, and you obviously, for some reason, there's some text in the top right, but you'd also get like the gameplay in the top right. And then the web browser, one, which has just got to make an endless haul, is what you'd see on my second uh, monitor to my right. And like I said, I can also turn off the, what you call it? I can turn off the webcam. So if I got that, I can turn off the webcam, even though that's everything. And in game, I can also turn off the webcam. So if I wanted to show I could replay or something like that, quite handy to do. So it is a really nice little device. Obviously there is setup process to it. Um, like I said, there's, you can't really do much apart from go for it. Um, depending on how much effort you put into it, it will look better. For example, at the moment in time, desk mute and mic mute and this kind of stuff. I've just ripped them, I've just copied and pasted them from the internet. So what you can also do as well, if you want to make it look that bit better, you can get a program like Photoshop, something like that. Go into it, 
and the actual pixel size for the buttons is 76 by 76 an 8-bit color and that's the size you get for your actual pixels and then all you need to do is open up your web browser a lot of player unknowns battleground stuff coming up and go in let's get a picture of a dig there we go and that's my picture of my dog and he will now fit perfectly in there so there we go so all we need to do is then click on this go to the test icon and then we've got the icon there and obviously it brings it up just here so really nice little thing that you can change the icons yourself obviously there's a lot of customization in it and you can make it your own and make it really cool obviously don't put too much effort into it because i didn't uh, but don't put too much effort into it for the sake that you're streaming. your viewers never got to see this this is just how ocd are you and like you can tell with my setup i'm not that ocd so obviously this is used for actually activating and disactivating a lot of stuff. It's your imagination that's got to limit you. So for example, at the moment in time, I've got the simple stuff like starting soon, in game, out of game, the web browser and stuff like that. But you can get a bit more creative. So I'll give you a quick demonstration. I've just got to set it up. So at the moment in time, what I want to do is have this dancing dog come up when I press a button and then just disappear when I want it to disappear. So the easiest way to do that, I'm going to do a quick tutorial for you now. You need to drag over. I'll just get this so you can actually see it. So you get from source, drag it over. And first you want to do is give it a title, so dance dog. And then the collections, leave that blank. Go to the scene I'm using, which at the moment in time is recording. And then the source is the image source. And then I'll just change this picture to my dog again. So that's done. So when I click that button on the Elgato now, it'll bring the dancing dog back up. And then I can just di get rid of it just like that. I'm going to do my best impression of a Twitch streamer now. I got a kill! It's dancing dog time! Dancing dog time! Yeah, that's why I don't do Twitch streaming. But yeah, that's the kind of things you can do with it. You can do silly things like that. I obviously, you can do the more professional going in and out of stuff like that so yeah i think it's a real cool device so i'm gonna go back and give you my conclusion now so conclusion time from the Elgato stream deck. What do we actually think about it? Well, I've had a heck of a lot of fun playing with this thing. Obviously, I'm not a professional streamer, so I don't give it a full blast of everything it can do, but I do use it quite often for changing scenes, stuff like that. It is very easy to use. I mean, obviously, there is quite a bit of setup time with it, but it is worth it over time. It's also very intuitive to use. It's nice and easy. You know exactly what the buttons have got to do, and the software is also quite self-explanatory. I have not read any kind of user guides or anything. You just dive in there and get it done. You're not going to break the thing i mean unless you drop it too much i think we actually hit the table but don't break it the best thing about the actual software and the device is when you update something in the software it updates to this straight away there's no lag or waiting around or having for it to update anything it just does it straight away so it is a nice little device i don't think there's much memory on this thing because when you turn it off here yeah, software has to be working so it's all done through the software and this is just a control for the software but it does work absolutely fantastically now, like I said, most streamers do have some kind of integration with macros or stuff like this where you've obviously got the subscribers and stuff, but a lot of people do miss out on this kind of thing and they're still having to flick back screen to screen to control OBS or exploit. This does get rid of that problem. It's just quick and simple. Click the button and it's done. You don't have to start control, tabbing, going back to full screen, just messing about. It just makes it a lot more simpler. Now the actual value device in the UK at the moment time, it's around about £140. It does fluctuate depending on what site you buy it for, but £140. If you are a proper streamer and you're making money off a stream, this is a nice sensible offer to go with. It is got to do you a heck of a lot and it's got to be, it's just the extra control you've got to get from it. It's absolutely fantastic. If you're a new streamer or just getting into streaming, I'd let, wait and see how you went because if you're not going to be using it, it's got to be wasted desk space and it's got to be a bit of wasted money for you as well. But £140, full call buttons, 15 buttons programmable and obviously updated so the software that comes with it gets updated regular, on a regular basis. So they're always adding new features and getting rid of bugs and stuff like that. So Elgato's doing a really good job at supporting this and obviously the streamers that have been using these that I've talked to do really enjoy them as well. So let's get down to the end of it. The awards for this thing, we've already given them out but I'm going to say them here again. We're giving it a gold and a recommended this device. 
Uh, gold because it is well built, it does a job absolutely fantastic and recommended because it just makes the life of a streamer a heck of a lot more easy. Like I said, no more going in and out of videos, uh, out of OBS or out of Expert. It's just all there at your fingertips on your desktop just waiting to be used. It's nice, elegant, stylish design. Tons of features on it that can be used and obviously if you've got a bit more imagination you can be putting things like GIFs, dancing dogs and stuff like that in there. The software, really easy to use, it's quick and easy. Obviously if you want to go into the more deep stuff and start having extra icons, it does take a bit more setup time but it is still easy, easy software to use. And we do highly recommend this. If you're a professional streamer or you stream on quite a regular basis, we do recommend this. I won't recommend it to anybody just starting out, but anybody that's like an amateur or professional streamer, you need one of these on your desk because it's got to do the world of good. But the, obviously the only con to it where it's not exactly budget friendly at £140. I do believe you are getting your money's worth, but a lot of people aren't got to be able to afford that or just don't see the point of investing it, which if you're one of them people, I won't recommend you getting this anyway. If you don't think you've got a need for it, then you obviously don't. But if you do think I could use that, then go get one. It is going to help out a lot. So yes, thank you very much to Elgato for sending that device in. It's been an absolute pleasure playing with it. Thank you very much to you guys watching the channel. If you liked the video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. If you liked us that much, please subscribe and get notifications with the bell icon. God, I sound like an average YouTuber. But yes, I need to say these kind of things because it does help the channel grow quite a lot and we'll get more interesting devices to play with as well. But yes, once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later. ta -ra.